Today we're discussing the latest NHL trade talk around the Montreal Canadiens. Will we see them blowing things up and going more into a rebuild later into the season? We're also looking at trade talk around the Penguins and the Rangers. We have some news from the NHL waiver wire and some injury updates. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and rumors to talk about here today. Uh, let's kick things off with some news from the NHL waiver wire. First up, we get word today that the Ottawa Senators have Clark Bishop on waivers. Now, Clark Bishop's normally a fourth-line player, somebody who kind of bounces a little bit between NHL and AHL, somebody they picked up on waivers themselves back, I think it was almost two seasons ago now, from the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, Bishop's been out injured to start the season, uh, and he's now ready to uh, to come back and play so they want to assign him to the AHL to start the year uh, as the Senators get ready to come back and play after having a bit of a COVID uh, pause you could say for three games they're ready to make a comeback here uh, in a short time span in the next couple of days and of course they want him to be able to go down and play in the American Hockey League and he'll likely get a probably get an opportunity for recall uh, within the week or so like once they return around early December but he'll need waivers to do that there's also Two players on waivers for unconditional waivers, which is basically for contract termination. That's the Carolina Hurricanes have uh, 30-year-old Eric Jelena and the Minnesota Wild have Ivan Lodnia. Now, of course, in the case of Jelena, he's a former NHL player. He played uh, parts of like four or five seasons before, and then he went and played overseas. He was playing in Europe, trying to make a comeback to the NHL. Uh, has been mostly down in the AHL so far, not getting an NHL opportunity. So I assume he's likely going to go back and play in Europe or uh, you know maybe find other opportunities outside of the NHL. So it makes sense that he would ask for the contract to be terminated. In the case of the Minnesota Wild player, Ladonia. He's only 22 years old, uh, but he's currently playing in the KHL, so I would suggest that based on that, he's likely you know, planning to stay over there for a while, and it just doesn't make sense for them to have uh, that contract in place any longer. They may not ever get him to come over. I'm not really sure that any further details on that. I didn't really see much except for the fact that they were terminating the contract. So all those players will be on waivers until tomorrow afternoon. We'll find out if there are any claims. Usually for unconditional purposes, there's never a claim. It wouldn't make sense for teams to claim players in those circumstances. They could sign them as free agents afterwards if they wanted to try to get an opportunity. Of course, Clark Bishop, though, on the other hand, you never know. A probably unlikely claim, but we'll see tomorrow. Now, as far as uh, some injuries go, uh, we get word that the Lightning are going to be without another significant player, and that's Braden Point. They're already without Nikita Kucherov right now, and now we hear that Braden Point is going to be out indefinitely. Uh, that's certainly not good, but we really don't know the full extent of the injury. Of course, in their recent game here against the New Jersey Devils, he had a situation against Devils defenseman Ryan Graves uh, where he was basically knocked off the puck and went crashing really hard into the boards. He was actually awarded a penalty shot on the play uh, and was able to continue for a little bit, but afterwards more, uh, you know, everything kind of materialized afterwards with the injury. Sometimes, you know, initially you don't know what's going on. You don't necessarily feel things until a little bit later. Um, so they didn't give any further details, just that it's an upper body injury, and we'll have to see. Eventually we'll probably get more of an idea how long he'll be out, but indefinite usually means that it's going to be an extended time and they're not exactly sure just yet how long. So that's going to be a big blow for the back-to-back -back defending Stanley Cup champions, but they're still a relatively deep team, even without Point and Kucherov. But if he ends out, you know, ends up a really a long time with Kucherov already being out an extended time, that could certainly hurt. And it's going to make things uh, tougher for them to defend their championship here and make sure they have a strong regular season we also got word that uh, devils forward tice thompson who is really i guess more like an nhl ahl player he's only played a few nhl games this year i uh, appeared in seven american hockey league games as well uh, he was injured requires shoulder surgery and his season is essentially over so thompson of the devils will not be making a return and we also got word as well that one of the top uh, draft picks and prospects around the NHL. Uh, Mason McTavish of the Anaheim Ducks is being returned to the Ontario Hockey League to his junior team, the Peterborough Peets, which is welcome news by Team Canada for the World Juniors. McTavish had a great showing. He played his nine games. Of course, he was. Uh, you can do that without burning a year off your entry-level contract. If he would have played one more, then that contract would have fully kicked in and a year would have counted. So uh, clearly, they didn't want to go down that road, even though he had a good showing. And you could make an argument that Maybe he could have stayed. I mean, McTavish is extremely 
uh, you know, physically mature. So, like, from that aspect of it, along with everything else, like, he, you know, could have had a case to stay, to be honest. But the Ducks want to do right by him, and they think it's best for his development to go back to junior, uh, finish strong. Obviously, those should give him a real good opportunity, as I mentioned before, uh, for some other guys to have a, a big role for Team Canada. Wouldn't be surprising at all to see Mason McTavish in uh, the running, even to be team captain for Canada. Not to get that it's a guarantee by any means, but he would certainly be within the leadership group for sure. If he doesn't get a C, I'm sure he'll get an A, and he could play a big role and continue his development. And I would imagine that next year there'll be a really good chance that McTavish will stick in the NHL. But between him and Trevor Zegras, they have their one-two punch down the middle for the top six centers. Like They're in excellent shape in this Ducks rebuild. Already this year looks to be ahead of schedule. And with those two bright spots there, with some guys like Drysdale uh, on the blue line and some other young uh, wingers like this group that has been assembled and drafted extremely well. So this Ducks team is going to be in real good hands here moving forward. Now, before we jump into the remainder of today's video, I do want to pause for a moment and acknowledge our channel sponsor, Manscaped. Top Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Manscaped. And guess what? Hockey fans are buzzing because hockey is back. Want to know what else is buzzing? The Lawnmower 4.0 from our friends at Manscaped, who are the global leaders in male grooming, trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. I highly recommend the Performance Package 4.0, which includes their new state of the art Lawnmower 4.0, as well as some other great features. The Lawnmower itself has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new multifunction switch that can engage as a travel lock, gives you the ability to turn on an LED spotlight as well for a more precise shave. Uh, also, as I've mentioned on numerous occasions before, Manscaped is about much more than just a trimmer. They have everything, all aspects covered and male grooming including some great formulations like their brand new ultra premium body wash to keep you smelling great all day long it's certainly a big hit here i absolutely love it they also have other exfoliators and gels to keep all aspects of your grooming needs covered i highly recommend you check out manscape.com use promo code tsh for 20 percent off and free shipping that's 20 percent off and free shipping at manscape.com using promo code tsh so thanks very much for watching that promotional content. I do greatly appreciate it. Before we jump into the trade rumors as well, just wanted to give a quick update on the Top Shelf Hockey merchandise, including these hoodies, which is certainly by far our top selling product uh, in the store. Of course, we're launching a Black Friday sale. We're getting to that time of of the year here in November. Uh, so we're going to have, I'll put a graphic up on the screen so you can see it. Uh, so you have the proper promo code to use, uh, but there's going to be 25% off everything in the Top Shelf Hockey merchandise store. So there's a great selection of hoodies and t-shirts and other merchandise uh, that you can buy that uh, supports the channel. And if you're interested in trying to get anything like ahead for the holidays for either a Christmas present or whatever you celebrate in that regard, uh, it's probably wise to make an order soon given how how, you know, things are taking a little bit longer with shipping delays and everything else that everybody's kind of facing around the world, depending on where you live and everything. So I'd get those orders in quickly to make sure you have stuff before the holidays. But 25% off will certainly make things, uh, you know, obviously a little bit better value, better price, and, uh, and help with shipping costs and things like that as well. Uh, so that applies to everything in the store you see on the graphic. The promo code is top shelf 25 so use that full code all in caps and you'll be able to get 25 percent off your entire order all sales certainly help continue the growth of the channel and everything is very much greatly appreciated now into the trade talk here today uh let's kick things off with the new york rangers now we just want to touch on uh ryan strom now there's no real urgency here suggesting Strom's going to be traded. The New York Rangers are having a pretty good season, but they, I guess the only part that's uncertain about his future, a couple of things. One, he's a pending unrestricted free agent, uh, so he needs a contract beyond the current year. There's been no word of any extension talks even being started yet, so you have to think that, you know, maybe there's a possibility that he won't be back just because they haven't really engaged to get him locked up. But secondly, uh, they're in a pretty tight salary cap cap situation here. I mean, as of right now, the Rangers only have about $10 million of space available for next year's allocation of cap space. They've already have a lot of it tied up. They've signed some mega extensions here not not long ago for guys like Mika Zibanejad and Adam Fox. Uh, so they have a lot of money tied up along with Jacob Truba and Artemi Panarin and you know, Chris Kreider. They have a lot of long-term deals now on the book. So they do have to be very 
cautious of that. And it doesn't really leave a lot of money left for a guy like Strom, who's their number two center. And you could say he's played his best NHL hockey in a Rangers uniform, found pretty good chemistry with a guy like Panarin, and he's really been pretty solid overall. During his previous stints with the Oilers and Islanders, Like he was looked upon as being a good player, but certainly stepped up his game uh, a lot since arriving in the Big Apple. So if they don't sign him, though, uh, then what does his future hold is the question. Now, if the New York Rangers are heading towards a playoff spot, I really don't see a scenario where they'd want to subtract from their lineup, right? But at the same time, if they're going to have a tough time keeping him, it, you know, what's best for the organization longer term? I mean, this Ranger team has come through a rebuild. They're, they're in a situation now where they're able to challenge for playoffs. Uh, I'm not sure we can call them a cup contender at this point, but they're certainly a pretty good team for sure. And once you get into playoffs, anything can happen. So most teams don't usually subtract going into the playoffs. So therefore, you have to think that he could be used as like their own rental or whatever, or maybe they work out a contract extension later. But it's going to be tough with $10 million in space, but they have to fill about seven roster spots with that amount of money. That doesn't leave much more than a million dollars a player. It's only... You know, a million and change each. And Ryan Strom's making $4.5 million right now. Based on how he's played and the stats he's put up, he's certainly earned himself a raise. So you have to think he's going to end up, I don't know, at least five, probably closer to $6 million as a solid number two center, being the point totals he's got. I mean, he might even be able to get more on an open market. It's really difficult to say. Um, so there's certainly some uncertainty around his future at the very least. We really won't know the extension here of where he's going until we get closer to the deadline. If the Rangers fall back a bit in the standings and they're not confident, they're going to be able to really be a playoff contender or just really, even though, you know, sometimes you make the playoffs, but you, you know you're probably not going far. Maybe they do something different in that regard too. But Ryan Strom's future in the Rangers organization Certainly has a big question mark on it. Now, especially talking about players in that same boat, let's jump over to Pittsburgh, their division rival, and take a look at a possibility here as well. There's a recent Athletic article examining their future as well. Of course, the Penguins have had a few wins here recently, but certainly didn't have a great start to the season. Uh, at some points here, they've been you know near the bottom of the standings in their division, which has been pretty tight. Pittsburgh and the Islanders, two teams that have been really good here for a while, but certainly not having the starts to the season that they won. It kind of goes over some possibilities in the article in The Athletic, talking about some players that might move on. Would they consider... You know, parting with Malkin or Latang, who are pending UFAs. You know, and of course you have other guys uh, like Dumoulin and Rust, etc. You know, who would be most likely to be moved here? And I think it's fair to say, with the impending sale of the team and the fact that this team is going to want to continue to try to, you know, be successful and go forward with new ownership coming on board. I don't really think we're going to likely see, at least at this point. Things can change, uh, like a full rebuild mode. So guys like Latang, Malkin, Crosby are probably going to get another kick at the can here now. But one name mentioned in the article that they could see maybe not coming back would be Brian Russ. Now, Brian Russ is soon to turn 30 years old. I think it's fair to say he's still an effective player, but certainly has declined a little bit from his peak a few years ago. Um, so it might not make sense for the Pittsburgh Penguins to sign a guy like Russ at 30 years old to a four, five, six-year contract. That might not be really the most sense for that organization at that point in time in his career. So, uh, you know, if they're going to remain out of the picture in the playoffs, which I unfortunately do foresee as being a real solid possibility, then Brian Russ could be very well become a pretty good trade chip at the deadline. I mean, think about teams looking for, you know, top six, top nine talent with experience in playoffs and Stanley Cups. He fits the bill. He's got a lot of playoff experience with the Penguins. Uh, you know, if a guy who's put in a, lot of, a fair bit of goals in the net, been a good playoff performer, I think he could fetch a pretty good return for the Penguins. So if they're not in it, I would suspect he could be near the trade uh, bait list as we approach the deadline as well. And of course, we want to address the Montreal Canadiens. There's an article in TVS Sports looking at some possibilities here. Now, at first, they look at a couple of players that they felt might make sense heading to the deadline that other teams would have a lot of interest in. Clearly, at this point in the season, it looks like Montreal is not only you know very likely to miss the playoffs, 
It's quite possible if things continue at the current pace, they could be a bottom dweller in the entire league and be looking at the draft lottery and maybe having one of the higher draft picks in next year's draft, which in a way, if you're going to be you know near the bottom, you definitely want a high pick. And they're hosting the draft as well, so they'd have a major opportunity to grab an impact player and really make a big draft splash, which I'm sure... They would love to do. No guarantee is going to be current GM Mark Bergevin or where the future of this team holds. There's lots of question marks, and that is for sure. And I would suspect that owner Jeff Molson is going to want to get something sorted out sooner than later because do you really want your GM, uh, you know, like Bergevin, handling all the moves of the deadline to shape the future of the team and who to sell off, who to consider keeping, and all those really hard decisions with resetting this team next year if he's not going to be uh, steering at the helm. I mean, wouldn't it make sense to have your GM in place ahead of time before all those decisions are made? You have to think it would be, right? But this article mentions two players in Ben Sherratt and Yuel Armia as being two players who will likely generate a lot of interest. Now, Sherratt for sure, making $3.5 million pending UFA. We've talked about him before. I have no doubt he likely gets traded. Likely commands a pretty good return for Montreal. Possibly a first-round pick. I don't know if it's going to be, but it could be. Uh, a second-round pick or a good prospect at the very least here. When it comes to Armia, I do agree he would make a great addition, especially for like a third-line player who can chip in on offense. The only downfall to that might be the contract. I mean, his contract's not terrible by any means, but teams often at the deadline don't always want to acquire players with term. It kind of depends on the situation. We usually see more rental players or pending UFAs or the more likely players to get moved, usually with a few players with term, but not a lot. But Armia has three years left at $3.4 million. He's 28 years old, certainly grown into a much bigger role with Montreal the past couple of years. I can see there being interest, but it might be tougher to do because of the term on the contract. But the more interesting piece here in this article goes on to wonder if they would consider moving a guy like Brendan Gallagher. Gallagher's been with the Hams his entire career so far. He's 29 years old. He comes with a pretty decent contract, but there is a lot of term, and if he's going to continue to not put up the bigger numbers like he had in the past, the contract might not be you know, the greatest here in the not-too-distant future. He's making $6.5 million. He has five years left on the term, and he has a six-team no trade clause. So it's only six teams he's blocking. That still leaves a big percentage of the league for Montreal to be able to move him to without his consent. So certainly, uh, it's an interesting case. Now, would there be a big market for Brendan Gallagher? That's, that's a real tough call because here's the thing. I think a lot of teams like Gallagher. He's a heart and soul player. Uh, so for Montreal to consider moving him, would certainly be tough on the fan base. There's no doubt. And, he, you know, he's not afraid to go to the net. He's not afraid to go to the dirty areas. He ex exemplifies exactly what you want for playoff hockey. Like, for looking for a team like the Penguins, for example, who are missing guys like Patrick Hornfist and Brandon Tanev and those kind of players that they no longer have. He'd be an awesome fit there. Contract-wise and cap-wise, it probably wouldn't work. That's just an example. But still, the point here is, is that a guy like Gallagher would generate interest, but they might be scared off from the contract. It's probably going to prove difficult, but should Montreal consider making that kind of move? If they feel like they really need to go into more of a rebuild, they need to decide which veterans need to stay and be a part of the solution and which veterans they can sell off for the most value to help this team move forward. I'm not really sure what the answer is there on Brendan Gallagher. It might be too tough to do, and he might be you know, the guy that's maybe the most likely to stick around, be part of the rebuild, even if they go down that route, and then, you know, be the the, uh, the veteran leader, potentially future captain, who can help these young players develop into being better pros and being a part of the team's future. But I'm not sure how much interest there would be, to be honest. I think a lot of people like his game, his character, everything he brings. But when you look at the contract and the money and everything involved, it just might be too much, uh, you know, to, to swallow to make that kind of trade. So let me know your thoughts. Will the Montreal Canadiens go more of a full rebuild? Do you see it being as more of a small, quick reset? How will they react? Will Mark Bergevin be at the helm? Will Molson go in a new direction before we even get there so that you don't have a lame duck GM making decisions for your team's future when they're not a part of it themselves? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching and I will catch you next time.